Hello, today Dougal and I are at Raymond James Caravans in Atherston in Warwickshire and we've come to look at this, the Eldis Explore 304. As you know, we've been enjoying this Bailey Discovery D42 for a few weeks and it's really given me a taste for small, simple caravans. And this is one of my favorites and I just wanted to come here. I knew they had one in stock because I wanted to show you around and just show you what you can get. This is a four berth caravan in a tiny body shell and it's absolutely ideal for any single person, couple or even small family looking for a simple caravan, a really nice, bright, simple caravan. So without further ado, let's take a look. Oh, Dougal, cheer up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dougal. Meanie Daddy's not letting you in this one either. This caravan has been sold. It's just arrived from the factory. It's not yet been PDI'd. So we will have to put up with a few things like um, plastic on the upholstery but it's better than not seeing a caravan at all. This is one of my favorite caravans on the market for a start. The price is amazing. This has a few extras added to it which I'll go through including the SE pack which gives you the Alco stabilizer hitch, gives you the alloy wheels, gives you a spare wheel and a carrier. It gives, um, there's also a microwave fitted to this one, which is an optional extra. And all that in a four berth, comfortable family caravan with shower, central heating, hot water for 15,800 pounds. That's what this was on sale for at Raymond James Caravans. It was available on Wednesday. We're here on a Saturday. It's now been sold. So, <laughs> shows you the, how popular these little caravans are. As of, this is a 2021 model, folks. If you can find a 2021 model still, um, jump on it. And if not, put your name down for a 2022 model. So a few facts and figures for you. The shipping length is 5.54 meters, which is 18 foot two in old money. And the body length is 4.48 meters, which is 14 foot eight in old money. Now your mass in running order is 886 kilos, but as I say, this has had the SE pack added. And for that, you need to add 22 kilos to that, giving you an MRO in the real world of 908 kilos. Now this is plated with an empty PLM of 1,043 kilos, but you can have that upgraded to 100, well, sorry, 1,100 kilos. This one you can see, actually it says empty PLM is 1,043. I would recommend you'd go for the upgrade and get the, uh, the upgrade to 1,100. You can see there, the figure one, where it says 1,100, that's the, uh, that's the capacity of the chassis, uh, the, the axle. So the axle is a 1,100 kilo axle, but the empty PLM on this caravan is 1,043. If this were my caravan, uh, I would be getting it up plated. So you could at least have some kind of a realistic payload. Now looking around, as I say, we have the stabilizer hitch at the front. No room for a cycle rack at the front. You can have a cycle rack fitted to the back. It is an optional extra. Can't see really to show you this side other than the fridge vents and the outlets for the whale um, water heater there. Now, this is of interest to a lot of people. The fridge vents, as you can see, are on the off side of the caravan, which means your fridge is not venting into the awning. If you've got children sleeping in the awning and you're off grid, you're running on LPG, you do not have the worry of the fridge venting into the awning because it vents onto the offside. Here we have a barbecue point. I believe that's an extra. And this is the whale easy slide socket. As you can see, so there'd be no unclipping and flapping on the motorway with that. So that's a good move. 
and there is your battery box and your mains inlet never a fan of mains inlets on the near side but it is what it is and then i shall put the camera on a tripod and show you the gas locker because i've unlocked it already but you need to get the uh you need to get the prop like you would in a car. So let me put the camera on a tripod and show you how that works. Okay, so as I say, I've unlocked it. And what you need to do is there is a prop for this. And you clip it into there. So it's not quite as convenient as if it was on gas struts, but at least you can still go hands-free and uh, get to the gas locker. And let me just show you inside. So you've got room for two sizable cylinders there and a few other bits and pieces as well. You've got vents in case you do have a gas leak and this is sealed against the, the internal body. So if you do have any gas leaks, you've got no worries about it going into the cabin. Happy days. Right, in time on the tradition, folks, I'm going to go and get the wide angle camera give you a quick sweep of the interior and then we go into the interior in a little more detail and like I say apologies that there is plastic on the upholstery but of course if you were buying this caravan I think you would want that plastic to stay on as well. Okay, so just before we go in, you can see we've got a two-part door here, no window, but I do like a two-part door, I really do. So you can have the top of the door open on a nice spring or an autumn morning. There is a light over the door, which is good. And as we go in, we'd have no boot cupboard. There is a, an inset, a, a mat to go there. And you can see there is a rolled up carpet runner and that goes down the center of the caravan. So it's a carpet runner rather than a shaped carpet. But no worries about that. So we've got the washroom here on the right as we come in. Little dinette there with a bunk above. And then on the left side here, we have the kitchen but before we step in. We can see also we've got the controls to the whale heating and hot water. So you've got the whale heat air system and then the whale fast warm up eight litre hot water tank. And then there's your other controls there. Now I've been and seen the whale heat air made. So I shall link to that video in the description below. And I've had the heat air on test in my old vintage caravan Glynis and again I'll link to that video in the description below. I do like the whale heat air system so that's uh, that's a bonus. This caravan has had the optional microwave fitted and you can see it's really smart how it's integrated in the cupboard there. I am five foot ten and a half and you can see the the microwave is sort of level with my head 
which of course, and it's a microwave with a new feature and that's called the hello feature because you can actually do your hair in it. Although there is a proper mirror by the door here. But yes, it has a microwave with a hello, which is a bonus, isn't it? As I say, that's an optional extra that Raymond James have had fitted to this caravan and you can if you specify it. Down to the sink and three burner harp. Um, whether you like the black or not is personal choice. It's, it's okay. Um, I think I'd rather stainless steel, but anyway. These, this is going to be a dirt trap, isn't it? Uh, where you've got the controls. I mean, it keeps them nice and neat, but I think that's going to be a pain with all the crumbs where my fingers are down here to keep clean. I'm not overly, it's not a deal breaker for me, but it's just to be aware folks that I think better designs of hobs are available. And then below the hob, we have the Thetford combi grill and oven. Absolutely nothing wrong with that because unless you are going to be cooking Christmas dinner in the caravan, I'm not sure when you'd ever need both the grill and a separate oven. And then we've got a big cupboard underneath. Now you'll notice all the cupboards and drawers have positive latches here. But what I found with these folks is that they don't come out very much. And if you unscrew them a bit, they go wobbly. So they don't come out very much. And I know I've got fat fingers, but they don't give me a huge amount to grab hold of. This is your cutlery drawer under the sink. Again, it's not a huge criticism, but if you do have fat fingers like me or arthritis in your hands, something like that, something I would just want you to be aware of. Three drawers and then a double cupboard below, which is super. Yeah, I'm having a few issues opening the cupboards here, which is a shame because the overhead lockers have a much nicer system. They've got the little thing you just, they're positive catches, but they're these ones that you just touch underneath. So that's where you put your crockery. And then we have a double socket in the kitchen, which is good. And then we have a worktop extension here. Just nice and solid. So that is a pretty good kitchen. Like I say, the those buttons I find a little bit small for my fat fingers, which is a pity. So I'll just put this back down. Oh, that's useful, folks. You can do that with one hand. Oh, I approve. You don't need two hands to put the uh, kitchen extension down. And then let's have a look at this super lounge. Now, if there's four of you, that might be a bit of a squish. But I think for two of you lounging, you've got two lovely corners. And uh, if you're into TV, you have your TV shelf there with a, an aerial socket, 12 volt socket and your main socket there. So that's where you'd be watching your TV. Personally, how can I put this, how does this one go down? Oh, one handed again, folks, just one handed release. Very impressive there, Eldis. Personally, if I sit down, I'd rather enjoy the view. You've got a nice deep window there. And then you've got this lovely single piece panoramic window at the front. And I am a fan of one piece front windows because if you've got a lovely view, okay, not the greatest view at the moment, but if you have a lovely view, that's gonna frame it so well. And the other thing, I mean, and this is personal choice folks. So, you know, this is, <laughs> this is just purely my personal choice. I love the upholstery. I think it's fresh, bright, clean. I really do. But that's just my, that's just my taste. You might hate it. And that's absolutely fine. 
We have a little cupboard under here. Put shoes and things in there. And then continuing round the caravan, this is where the fridge is. So the fridge is opposite the kitchen. And like I say, the fridge, because it's on this side of the caravan, it's still easy to get to. And if you're on gas, it will not vent into the awning, which is super. And then above the fridge, we have the wardrobe, all again with these small buttons. And the back of the wardrobe is the table. So if you are going to have the table in the front dinette here, you'll need to fight the clothes because obviously if all your clothes are hanging up on that rail at the top there folks you're gonna have to fight the clothes to get the table out however i think many people buying this will be people like myself or couples who will be using this purely as a dinette this is brilliant now the the, the bunk bed above it um, you can't take that out I've had a look I mean yeah you could probably unscrew it but it wouldn't look very good I would really it would it would make my day if Eldis offered this as a three berth and where you didn't have to have the bunk because that's just weight and volume that you're carrying and if someone like myself or a couple bought this caravan you'd probably never ever ever use it so kind of wish that was an optional extra but never mind we've got a dinette here and best of all there is a mains socket down here which is super so if you're using your laptop or anything at the rear dinette there is a power source that is top marks to eldest now you see too there's a small window here there's no window on the rear is this going to be a dark space no because above it there is a mini hecky roof light so the natural light comes down from the top so i am super impressed by this so we have a quick look in the washroom and then we'll do the beds so no surprises that the washroom is a wet room but again credit where it's due you've got a lovely dedicated tap to the wash basin and then a separate tap for the shower so once again I remind you that with all these extras this caravan is £15,800 or at least it was with Raven Janes before it got sold there's your roof light above I think you are getting a heck of a lot of caravan for a super price I really do and then you've got an electric flush toilet here and then above the toilet is a double cupboard so again with these just slightly annoying handles there there is a, a curtain it's not been fitted because uh, the curtain gets fitted at PDI so there's a shower curtain that comes around to, to protect the, um, the toilet and also the door and then you can also see folks there's a hanging rail here so once you've had your shower You've got somewhere decent to hang your towel and on a wet day you can hang your coats from there and let them drip drip down now my one concern and it always is a concern about washrooms like this is that uh, the integrity of this design of washroom relies exclusively on the seal being 100 percent perfect and also I'm not overly I don't know if you can see that folks there is a join in the wall board here and sometimes the joins you know once they get a bit wet they can start peeling and giving way so again it's not a deal breaker you can see here I would if I was buying this caravan I would probably just reseal I'll just get a, a corking gun and I just do it myself because for 15 grand I'm 
I'm not going to complain. But as I say, it's a shame there's this join here, which doesn't appear above the, the surface here. It's only in this section under the sink that you've got this join in the wall board, which I'm, I'm, I'm be honest, I'm disappointed about because uh, as I say, it should be okay. But once the water gets into that tape, I don't think it's gonna last terribly long, which is a huge shame. So, so that's a quick tour of the caravan now. So the next thing, as you know, is let's have a look at the beds, see how they make up and see how big they are. Well, that was easy. Uh, the one thing I would say is you can see, can you see on the camera there? We've got these two cushions here. I think what you would do is you would actually switch them over with this back cushion. So you'd, you'd have the bigger cushion at the front here, just so you wouldn't have this causing a gap. Can you see it's all slightly off camera? Um, yeah, you can see that might cause a bit of a gap there. Bearing in mind the cushions are still covered in plastic, which makes them a bit more slippery. They're a bit more grippy when they're not covered. But yeah, I would put the bigger one at the front here and these two at the back. And the other thing I would consider would be a mattress topper just to, just to sort of make it more comfortable and to, to get rid of those gaps. But even without a mattress topper, if you switch those around, that should be fine. So now the next thing of course is the tape measure. about six foot five which is one meter 96 long so that's pretty good and then width we have four foot five which is one meter 35 so all in all, oh, I've got the sun on me there. So all in all, that is pretty good. In fact, I said it's very good. Now about let's check the, uh, the bed measurements at the back and put the bunk up. Right, so this one's actually wider at this end than it is at that end. Let's have a quick check of the length of it and the width. The length. Mm, it's just under six foot, it's about five foot 11, which is one meter 80, one meter 79. And then width at the widest point here, looks really generous actually. Widest point, we've got two foot three, which is 89 centimeters. Now, as I say, I'm, if I was having this caravan, I might leave this made up as the bed. But the question is, is it long enough? Let me take my shoes off and find out. Oh, my sunglasses. So, Hmm. I mean, my head is touching and my feet are touching because I suppose the thing is what you've got to remember folks is when you're in bed, your feet have a tendency to relax and add an extra sort of inch to your size. But, hmm, I don't know. I think I, I could probably manage it all right. I don't know. I think that would annoy me. Um, I don't know, yeah, I'd say if you are ooh, five foot ten or under, you'll be fine with this with this bunk here. Um, also, of course, I have to remember that I don't sleep alone. Someone comes and joins me and uh, he leans. So there is space for him here, but I think I would end up getting pressed. Yes, I'm talking about you at the door, Mish. Uh, I think I would end up getting pressed into the wall, so I would end up making up the front bed. So that's the 
the third berth. Now let's make up the bunk and see how big that is. Now that, for a bunk bed operation, was really simple, really simple. That is top marks to Eldis for that. By the way, every, each bunk has got its own light, its own reading light. And this is, well, I'll make it about five foot, I'll make it about the same length, obviously, yeah, five foot 10, 180 centimeters, and then width, much narrower 56 centimeters that's one foot 11 so it's a little bit narrow and I don't see a weight sticker anywhere it says not suitable for children under six years there's your map by the way for the front door This is really simple though, really simple operation. Oh, I've now gone and cocked it up somehow. Let's see. I see, that's it. I have a feeling when this is um when this has been PDI'd that the the ladder will go in the wardrobe and maybe you can fold that mattress so maybe it sits a bit neater and it doesn't stick out above it but that is that is a really good bunk bed operation yeah really good so there you have it that's a little tour of the Eldis Explore 304 uh, one another one of what seems to be coming to be a series on this channel of small simple caravans I don't want to call these entry level anymore because I think more and more people are looking for life a bit more simple, caravans a bit more simple. They're really easy to use. One thing I found with the Bailey Discovery being so small is they're also really easy to tow. So you're not worried, you know, especially if you've got a bigger car, you don't have to go to 85% of the curb weight of your car if you don't want to. You, if you get something small like this, it's nice and narrow. It's only seven foot two wide on the road. It really is, um, I think to me, it's, it's a huge appeal to many people, including people like myself. And I love this, you know, even though I'm the wrong side of 50, I still prefer bright, clean lines and upholstery, which this is, whereas I think a lot of more luxurious caravans are just a little bit less less bright a bit less cheerful so all in all i am really impressed i love this caravan very much i would as i say i would if i would if you were buying it i think keep an eye on the ceiling the ceiling the the caulking in the um in the washroom i find the handles are a little bit fiddly the push handles and i I kind of wish that the, the bunk was an option rather than a compulsory part of the caravan because even in Eldis's literature they do admit that many couples buy this caravan so I feel that that might be something that Eldis might want to consider for future production but overall I really like this caravan there's a huge amount more that I haven't covered so if you want to find out more I'll leave a link to the relevant website in the description below. So there you have it folks, I hope you enjoyed that. As this really is one of my favorite caravans on the market, the Explore 304, it just puts a smile on your face. It ticks so many boxes and it is terrific value for money. It's small, it's simple, it's easy to tow and it can even accommodate a family. So I really, really like it.
I do hope you enjoyed this video. This video, as many of mine are, is self-funded. So if you appreciate the lack of adverts breaking up the ad, the video, because I do switch off the ads, uh, do consider supporting the channel by buying us a coffee. I'll leave the buy me a coffee link in the description below. But more importantly, if you don't subscribe, I'd be really grateful if you were to subscribe. It really helps the channel. Do give us a thumbs up. And it just leaves me to say from Dougal, and from me, thanks for tuning in. There, did you enjoy that, Dougal? Did you enjoy it? Did you like it? Did you? He never smiles. <laughs>